Hi friends, welcome to this week's math video. Today we're going to be learning about SOL 4.12 A and B. It says the student will define polygon and identify polygons with 10 or fewer sides. So let's begin by defining polygon. What is that word? Well, poly means many and gon means angles. So together it means a shape of many angles. Let's take a look at the exact definition and then we're going to dig into that today. It says a polygon is a closed plane geometric figure composed of at least three line segments that do not cross. None of the sides are curved. Okay, there's a lot of important pieces in there that define polygon. So we're going to take one at a time. Let's start by looking at the word plane. What does that mean? Well, we have two different types of shapes that we look at in geometry. One is two-dimensional, like this one where it's flat, and one is three-dimensional, like this one where it's like a toy that you could hold in your hand, like a Rubik's Cube. And this is it's kind of like a drawing that you would put on a piece of paper. So a plane geometric shape is like this one, where it's flat. It's a two-dimensional shape. Okay, so that is one thing that makes it a polygon is if it is a two-dimensional shape. Okay, here's another example. Here would be a triangle that you would could draw on a piece of paper. This is a plane shape or a two-dimensional shape. This is like a pyramid and this is a three-dimensional shape because it's not flat. So in order to be a polygon, it needs to be flat, like this triangle here. Another important piece of information in our definition says that the polygon is a closed figure. Well, closed figure means that it looks like this. You can see this one, all the sides are touching. But this one over here, this one is open. So this would be an open shape, but in order to be a polygon, it needs to be a closed shape. And the best way I can think of to have you remember this is imagine that there's like a little ant inside of it. If it would be trapped inside, then it would be a polygon. If it could climb out, it is not a polygon. It's not closed, it's open. Okay, another important piece of information is that none of the sides are curved. So they have to be straight lines. And you can see that in these two examples here. All of these sides are straight. This would be a polygon. This right here is a curve. So this would make that not a polygon. You must have straight lines. So this could not be a polygon, but this is. And it also says it has to have at least three line segments. Okay, so the very first polygon would be a triangle. It has three line segments. And so you notice here in those last two definitions, no curves, it has to have at least three line segments. That means a circle is not a polygon. That's important to think about. It's an important shape, but it's not considered a polygon. Okay. And then here's a very important one as well. It says that the line segments do not cross. So you can see here on this example, these lines cross, that means that is not a polygon. 
Okay, I'm going to have you take a look at these shapes. How many polygons do you see here? Okay, well, I know this one is open, so that is not a polygon because the ant could crawl out. This one is open as well. Nope, that's not a polygon. This one's open as well, not a polygon. I'm going to start crossing off the ones that I know are not right. That's not right. That's not right. Nope. Okay, let's look at these. Now looky here, this crosses. We're not supposed to cross, right? If it's a polygon. So this is not a polygon. Now this is closed right here. But this is a curved line. We need straight lines. So this also is not a polygon. We're going to cross that one off too. Now this one, this is closed. Yep. The sides are straight. Yep. Three or more sides. Yep. Okay, I think we got a winner. We got one polygon on this screen. So if your answer was one, you got that right. Okay, now let's take a look at all the polygons that you need to know. And their names are based on the number of sides that they have. So we're going to start with our most common one that you've been learning about for a while, a triangle. It has three sides. A quadrilateral has four sides. Pentagon has five. Hexagon has six. Heptagon has seven, octagon has eight, nonagon has nine, and decagon has ten. Okay, now these are probably fairly new words to you, and it might seem a little scary to try to have to memorize all of these, but we're going to spend a lot of time on this, and I have a fun little song that will help you as well. But take a look at something that is common with all of these bigger ones. First of all, they all have the last three word, three letters gone. So the only thing you need to really look at is the beginning part. That's the prefix. Penta means five, hexa means six, hepta means seven, octa means eight, nana means nine, and deca means ten. Okay? So let's take a look at what some of these look like. You'll see this one is a triangle, and there's lots of different types of triangles that you're going to need to know, but not this year. You're going to dig into that next year. But one thing I do want you to remember is that a right triangle is when one that has a little tiny square here. That means that that angle equals 90 degrees. So you'll hear that word. A right triangle and it just means that it's kind of like a square cut in half from corner to corner okay so there's lots of different kinds of triangles you're gonna learn about scalene triangles isosceles triangles equilateral you're gonna learn about different kind of angles like acute and obtuse but that comes more next year for now, you need to know that a triangle has three sides. And a quadrilateral has four sides. Now, quadrilaterals are very interesting because there's lots of different types of quadrilaterals. And their names are derived by the attributes of these, uh, as of these quadrilaterals. So sometimes their angles are different. Sometimes their, the length of their sides are different or um, if their lines are parallel to each other. Um, so all of those attributes create special names for all of these quadrilaterals. But what makes them all a quadrilateral is that they all have four sides. Okay? 
So a square would also be called a quadrilateral. Okay. A pentagon has five sides. And you're going to notice that these shapes over here might not look very familiar. But they would still be considered pentagons because of the number of sides. So you have some that are called regular. So this one would be considered a regular pentagon because it's, you know, familiar. But also it's because all the sides are the same length and all the angles are the same, um, the same measurement. Okay, so all of these little angles in here would measure the same. And then all the lengths of the sides would measure the same for it to be a regular pentagon. And these other two are called irregular. It makes, they are a pentagon because they have five sides. One, two, three, four, five. But nothing else about it is kind of predictable. This one over here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. The next one would be a hexagon. And again, this one here in the middle is called a regular hexagon because all the sides are the same length, all the angles are the same measurement. So this would be a regular one. And then we have three examples of irregular. So they're kind of fun to, to make because you can do it however you want as long as it has six sides. And then the way, the best way that I have found to count is to mark it with a little hash tag like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because sometimes, especially when they, when you have more sides, it's easy to lose track of where you started when you're counting. So it's nice to mark it. Okay, so you can see that you can create a lot of different types of hexagons. But what makes it a hexagon is that it has straight sides, it's a closed figure, and it has six sides. And this is a heptagon. Heptagons get even more interesting. The, the more sides that you can add, the more interesting the shapes can be. So you can see here a typical a, uh, a typical arrow is actually a heptagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next one is probably the most familiar shape to you because it's like a stop sign, an octagon. Okay, and then we have a nonagon that has nine sides. You should definitely practice making these. It's pretty fun, the kind of creations you can come up with. And then the last one that we need to know for fourth grade is a decagon. And that's when you get your very familiar one of a star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a decagon. Okay, so take a look at this one, and I want you to look at all these pairs. There's only one that both of them are octagons. Can you figure out which ones only show octagons? All right. And then look at this question. This came from the SOL. Uh, the released questions. This one says, which figure has less than four angles? So you got to remember all of these words. Which one has less than four angles? All right, now we're going to go to our polygon song. Now this song might <laughs> haunt you the rest of the day because it did me for days. It wouldn't get out of my brain. 
but it's a good thing because then it's going to help you remember the names of these shapes. So I hope you enjoy. you enjoyed that song feel free to rewind that and listen to it as many times as you want I think that will really help you remember those words I'm also sending you these pages that I would like you to print this is going to be extremely helpful for you so you're going to see when you look up close that each little section has directions you're going to color the vertices red. You're going to use a highlighter or a crayon to trace the sides. And you're going to use a blue crayon to make an arc where the angles are. Each type of shape is going to ask you 
for the number of sides, the number of vertices, the number of angles, the number of right angles, and the number of parallel lines. That is going to be very important because you're going to notice, especially for the quadrilaterals, that this ve the very slight differences are what makes the difference for their name. So those are important to notice. So you can see one really close up here. So the sides are yellow, the vertices are red. It's the pointy part of the shape. And then the blue arc for the angle. Another example of something that you could do is buy some fun straws and then just challenge your students to create a triangle, create a pentagon, create a hexagon. And so they are hands-on creating these shapes and that's really going to help re them remember not only the features of the shapes but the names of them. If you don't have straws, you can grab some toothpicks or some Q-tips. Anything would work. You can be real creative. Create them on paper and have them lay their shapes on top um, or their um, toothpicks on top, whatever you want to use. Anything to make it hands-on will help drill these details into their minds. All right, friends, thank you so much for viewing this video. I love this quote. It says, your I can is more important than your IQ, which means that your determination is going to get you a lot further in life than just by having a high IQ. So nothing can stop you if you're determined and you don't give up. All right, I love that. Have a great week.